Welcome to another episode of the Flow Track Podcast, a special Friday afternoon edition. We're going to be going live after every day of the World Indoor Championships. And uh, wow, the the first day kind of ended with a, a result that no one saw coming. I mean, we knew we were going to get something pretty special in the women's 60. We knew we had, you know, the dynamics of the two Americans who are kind of not really talked about, but running good marks. And then the Polish athlete who we thought, you know, Iwa Swoboda was going to maybe put on an incredible, you know, low 6'9 potential. But she gets fourth. She runs actually the same time as Brianna Williams, who gets sixth. Third through six, all ran 704. So she finishes fourth outside the medals. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people had her at least getting second or third at the worst. But she falls all the way to fourth. And the story basically just gets hijacked by the Swiss. Ken Bungie, who she is one of those runners who I just always, she's always in a final. She's like the notorious, I can make a final runner. She's never going to have the glory of like the Jamaican trios or Shakari or whoever. She's always just going to be, I'm in the final and I'm going to finish anywhere between fifth and eighth, maybe a fourth on a, on a good day. And for her to come here into Belgrade, and throw down not just a win, but an impressive win, a 696 win, a, dominant, a dominating win. And kind of just makes everyone like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, we forgot. You are one of the top runners in the world. Oh, wait, you do have the consistency of an elite runner where you can make final after final. And if you do look at the people who are in this final, Kambungi, Briscoe, St. Price, Swoboda, Jackson, Williams, Michelle Lee, and Rosa. If you look at this list of these eight women who are in the final, Jackson maybe is the only one who has like a consistent representation of being at the top of their game at world championship level because Briscoe is not out there making global finals. St. Price, this is our first time representing Team USA. So Boda, we talked about her. She's never even broken 11 seconds. Jackson, in a way, she's been good, but that's, a new good because she was a 400 meter runner. Brianna Williams is still kind of young, not really lighting the the world on fire. I uh, Michelle Lee, she's been around Trinidad and Tobago, but she's on the on the latter stages of her career. And then Rosa, I haven't even heard of her from Brazil. She got eighth in this race. So when you really think about it, Kembungi is like the one with the most pedigree. And now, you know. Monday morning quarterbacking this thing on a Friday afternoon, it actually makes sense that she were to win this race because there was no Shakari Richardson in this race. There was no the there was no Shelly Ann Fraser Price. There was no Elaine Thompson Hurrah, right? There was no Aaliyah Hobbs. There was no Melissa Jefferson. Shout out NCAA. There's none. There's no, there no, no, no none of that. So it makes sense that she wins this. So we kind of have egg on our face, but we put it on our face because Ken Bungie has been around for so long, constant professional, makes finals. That's what she does. And when she's going up against, kind of when you look at it now, a weakened field, pedigree-wise, she's going to win it. And then she not just won it, she won it in 696. Very impressive time. I'm not sure what that is all time. I'm going to have to look that up, bring up track and field news. Where 696 ranks all time in world history. Give me a second here. So 696 is good for one, two, three, fourth in world history. Fourth. All right. Privolo- uh, Privolova of Russia, number one. Gail Devers ran 695, number two all time in 1993. Isn't that crazy? 1993. That's so long ago. Marion Jones. Ran 695 in 98. And then Merlin Adi ran 696 in 1992. Fourth all time, putting her name on the all time record books in the 60s. Now, again, it is a 60, so we're not crowning her the next future Olympic champion, but it is a big show me respect moment that she got to have. And, you know, I'm all for it. We were just, we were ignoring her. We're kind of just being like, oh, yeah, you're that athlete who just makes finals. 
But if you're an athlete who just makes finals, going up against a bunch of people who never go to finals, you should win that race. So impressive run for Ken Bungie of Switzerland. Kind of the, the highlight of the day for me because we just didn't see it coming. And when you look at Swoboda, who had kind of like the perfect season, she won every race. She ran sub seven. She was basically looking like she was on like, you know, she was having her breakout year. She was like the breakout star. If there was like an SB for breakout star, it would have been her after this indoor season. And, you know, she kind of just folded it under the moment. I think she could have ran 696 in this race. I think she has that talent, but she doesn't have that experience of going through these three rounds. I mean, it was three rounds. Remember, three rounds in one, in one day, you know, one in the morning and then two in the afternoon or evening, afternoon for us. And I guess this was one of those kind of baptism by fire moments for her, for her to not really put it all together when it counted most. But she'll learn from it. And I hope, I really hope, I, I hope that she comes back from this fourth place finish and finds a way to excel at the 100 meters and get to see her on the Diamond League circuit, the Continental Tour circuit, and hopefully be one of the, the names we, th we throw on the dartboard as potential wild cards to defeat a Elaine Thompson hurrah because she had an incredible season. You can't take, you can't take away her season. Obviously, she would have loved to end it with a gold medal or at least a medal, but at the end of the day, she did run sub seven seconds. She did get fourth in the world. It's still pretty good. I mean, if I went to my parents tomorrow and I had to tell you to let you know, I ran a top 10 all-time mark and I'm fourth in the world. I highly doubt my parents are going to be like, son, we were looking for more from you. You're kind of disappointing us. No, it's an incredible season. So no disappointment for the Polish athlete. Do, though, want to give a big shout out to our Americans because Briscoe, St. Price, go 2-3, two, two medals for Team USA. Briscoe breaking seven seconds, running 699. Very impressive. St. Price, who super new to the whole... Team USA thing, like she was basically having kind of a one-off season. Everyone's like, who's this Mary Beth St. Price girl? Runs, runs at altitude in Colorado. What's going on here? And now that she's able to not only make her first team, but then bring it, turn it into, translate it into a, a global medal, nothing but uh, impressive reaction to what St. Price did. Um, and excited to see what she's going to do. I mean, Briscoe and St. Price, Here's the question. Are either of these women going to be able to either challenge Shakari in the outdoor? Are they going to be able to challenge a Jenna Prandini? Are they going to be able to challenge a Gabby Thomas? Are they going to be able to challenge an Abby Steiner? Are they going to be able to challenge an Aaliyah Hobbs? Are they going to be able to challenge a Tiana Daniels? There's a lot of unknowns there. We don't know. But I think we're going to have to start when we look at a start list at a random meet and we see Mary Beth on the line or Micaiah Briscoe on the line, we got we to gotta make sure we watch that race to see what's going on and not be like, oh, I'll wait till Shakari runs. No, we got to wait. When Briscoe runs and St. Price runs now, it's going to be must-see uh, track results. But yeah, again, Ken Bungie, 696. Incredible. Now, that was obviously, there's other finals that went down. Um, on, on the track. But before we break down more of the, the qualifiers and the finals, I do want to talk about the flow track pick them contest. Okay. We had the picks. There, there's three rounds to this pick them contest, right? We had the first round. If you were listening to the pod on Wednesday, a lot of the, all of those are now uh, finalized. It was how many team USA medals there's going to be, how many world records there's going to be. And also the time of the winning 60 meter women which I said was going to be 696 to seven seconds, which is exactly what it was. So Gordon went one for one so far on his flow track pick -em. But we have more picks now. Click on the, uh, this little guy here, the um, QR code. It'll take you right to the place to place your picks. We got four new picks for you to place. We'll have another four tomorrow for a total of, I think, like what? We're going to have like 12 picks, 12 or 11 picks. But here are the, 
the new picks that we're going to have um, for today, or I guess for tomorrow. We got placed in the day because they get the end tomorrow. First pick is going to be who will finish second in the men's 60. Now, the men's 60 uh, prelims and finals all go down tomorrow. I'm not asking you who's going to win. I'm just asking you who's going to get second, all right? Because who you tell me, so you don't need to really tell me who you think is going to win, but I just want to know who you think is going to get second. Is it going to be Coleman? Is it going to be Jacobs? Is it going to be Bracey? Or is it going to be someone else? I'm going with Bracey. I think Bracey's going to get second. I'm not saying who I think is going to win, but I think Bracey will get second. So going with, with at least one medal for Team USA getting second there. Second pick is going to be a yes-no question. Will Isaiah Harris or Bryce Hopple win 800-meter gold? We'll talk a little bit about this in the reaction to the 800-meter qualifiers. But Harris and Hopple look very good in their prelims. They got two good guys. The fields aren't that crazy. There's only eight guys in this final. It's a six-lane track. Chaos can happen. U.S. has a good pedigree of getting medals at World Indoors in the 800. Will USA get a gold? I'm going with yes. I think it's going to be Hopple. I think Hopple gets the gold. But I'm going with the yes. Pick number three. Women's 1500 finals, I believe, are either tomorrow. I think they're tomorrow or the next day. I'm not sure. But anyway, get the pick in. 1500 meter finals. Ethiopia won each of the prelim rounds. They won heat one, heat two, and heat three. So they have three women in the final. Will they go one, two, three in the 1500 meter final? I think they will. I think Ethiopia is going to go one, two, three in this final. So I'm going with a yes. And then the fourth and final pick, again, let me know. Go over to the, click on the QR code to get to these picks. Who will win the women's 400? Is it going to be Femke Bull? Is it going to be Shawnee Miller Uebo? Or is it going to be someone else? Maybe a, I don't know, a, Mc, a McPherson from Jamaica. I don't know. I'm going with Shell. I'm going with uh, Shawnee Miller Uebo, though. That's what I'm going with. So those are the picks. Get them in before the deadline, which is 1 p.m. Central tomorrow before the finals go off. Get them in. Click on the QR code. Make it happen. And the overall challenge, for those who don't know, I'm making all these picks. And I'm going to have a record. I'm going to go whatever. Hopefully, I go 12-0. and 0. I'm 1-0 and 0 right now. But if you have a better record than me, you'll be in the running to win a Fanatics gift card, a new cool volleyball cross net four-way. There's a thing. on. Click on the link. They'll show you what that thing is. But... This is just this, the third time we're doing this. The prizes are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So this is the, what the cross net four-way volleyball thing is. $180 value. thing costs $180. And it gets you three new friends. It doesn't come with three friends. You've got to find three friends to play with. But $180, and that ain't too bad. So you can win that. Again, prizes are going to get bigger and bigger as we go along this season. We're just getting started. So sign up. you got to give your phone number to be eligible. And let's get into it. All right, let's react to some of the other results of the two sessions. Talk about the women's 60. Let's talk a little bit bit about some qualifiers. Men's 400, which I pegged as the most boring event of the meet, is just keeping with the boredom. Nothing really crazy happened. Everyone that probably should have qualified, qualified, including our two Americans, Trevor Bassett, Marquise Washington. One of our contributors is in Belgrade, got an interview with Marquise Washington after his, uh, his first round, because they, they did two rounds today, one in the morning, one in the evening. Final, I believe, is tomorrow. Um, asked Marquise Washington what was his reaction to Donovan Brazier scratching, which allowed him to now, ultimately, now he's in a 400-meter final. And he said, you know, well, we got to do what it takes to win. And whether it was Brazier on the starting line or him, he's got to represent USA well and do what USA does best, which is win. So he's very short, very confident himself, liked his, liked his, uh, his mindset. I mean, speaking of his mindset, his Twitter handle is one track mind. He only has one mindset. It's just to win. So you got to love it. Marquise Washington onto the final with Ashland's Trevor Bassett, who uh, might try to pull off the NCAA World Double. I believe he won NCAA Indoors. I'm assuming he did. I haven't checked D2 results, but I'm assuming Trevor Bassett won NCAA Indoors. Anyway, so yeah. Men's 400, boring event, but the two Americans got through. Women's 400, not a boring event. Going to be one of the better events because we're going to see uh, Femke Bowl go up against Shawnee Miller Weibo in the final. But also, watch out for our girl Steph- Stephanie Ann McPherson, who actually 
beats out Bull in the first heat. We thought this would be a two-woman race. It's based on that, the way they look, though, through these semis and the heats, you got to think this might be a three-woman race as Femke Bull dove to that finish line. It seemed like a lot of effort for a big Q. Um, you have to wonder if Femke Bull's, you know, five-second burst there at the end is going to maybe take her, uh, you know, take a little bit of energy out of her legs in tomorrow's final. I don't think it will. She's a 400-meter hurdler. They're one of the strongest athletes in the world. So I think she'll still be fine. But McPherson looking smooth. Bull, not so much. Shawnee Miloebo just cruising through the first two heats. I think I'm going to have to go with Shawnee. I think I'm, I'm going with Shawnee. I think she looks the most uh, smooth. And also, she's also the best athlete of the three. So, I mean, have you seen what she does in a 200? Have you seen what she can do in a 400? And that's what it is. Being a good 200-meter runner. If Shawnee gets to the break first, no one is passing her. You're not going to run out in lane two and pass Shawnee freaking Miller or Weibo. So, just saying. Uh, that's the women's 400. Uh, a few other qualifiers. We had a lot of mid-distance qualifiers. Um, women's 1500, both Americans qualify pretty cool for, uh, Heather McLean and Josette Norris. Um, they kind of qualified pretty easily too. Uh, McLean was a small cue, but you look at the results, they took 12. They only eliminated a few, a few athletes. It was kind of a, a rinky dick, pre, a rinky dink prelim. Pretty much everyone got in as you look at this, like, what is it? One, two, three, four. Four women who ran 412 didn't get in, but then three women ran 434, 430, 428. So it was kind of, you should make the final. And Ethiopia looked good. They went one, two, they went, they won each heat. And I, I'm feeling the Ethiopia sweep. That's what the flow track pick them question is. I'm going with the yes. I know. I don't, I, I, I will be shocked if Norris or McLean medal. I will. I'll be shocked in a good way, for sure, because that'll be awesome. It'll be a hell of a, hell of a, hell of a new chapter for Josette Norris. Because remember, two or, two years ago, pandemic, it was like, how's this random Georgetown athlete now getting good? And now, no, not only is she getting good, she's making finals, she's running world standards. Now she's representing Team USA, and now maybe she's getting a global medal. They'll be like crazy. You're just the the. It's like Harry Potter. It'll just be going crazier and crazier. Couldn't write a better story. Um, I'll be excited to see how Norris and McLean do in that final. Other qualifiers, uh, men's 800, both Americans qualify. And man, oh man, Bryce Hopple, Isaiah Harris, they might go one, two. I really, really liked the way Harris and Hopple looked. Um, Hopple didn't win his heat, but he looked fine. Like he knew he was just getting a big cue. Hopple runs the slowest time of all of them, but he looked probably the cleanest in my opinion because he just kind of controlled. He knew what he had to do, be top two and you're in. Harris and Hopple though, I think there's a really strong chance they could go one, two. I know they're thinking that probably. I know Harris and Hopple both post-race were saying to our contributor that you know they, they believe they're ready to go. I mean, Isaiah Harris said the ultimate goal is to get a win. That's simple. It's just, it's just a win. He's just going for a win. I mean, it happens to be the world indoor championships, but it's just a win. Just go for the win. If you just simplify it as I'm just trying to win one race and not, you know, overthink it as I'm trying to win a global gold, it makes it a lot easier. It's like, hey, there's seven other guys on the track with me. I just got to be better than all seven. Just get the win. Um, but I'm going with, I think, we, I think we might go one, two, at least one, three. And I think Hopple will get the win. But hey, Isaiah Harris, he does have a great speed. We see what he's done in the 600 multiple times in college. Um, so Isaiah Harris, if he's smart, he'll have that lead, you know, through, through 400 and then just never let it go. And then it's all she wrote. And just hope that Hopple doesn't swing wide in the lane five and out, out lean him. So men's 800, again, pretty simple that all the Americans get through. Couple new Kenyans on the on the on the. There was like a young teenage Kenyan. I think Noah was his name. Noah Noah Kibet. Uh, he looked pretty good. He was in the heat with uh, Hopple, um, so maybe he'll do something special. But you look at this field, right? Harris, the Spaniard, Araba. Never heard of him. Marco Arap. I've heard of him. He'll he'll be good. He's actually going to probably go out for the lead. 
Um, Kramer from Sweden, never heard of him. Uh, Quebec, he's new. He's a teenager. Garcia, he's pretty good. The Spaniards are pretty good in the mid-distance. The Belgian athlete, Creston, never heard of him. And Hopple. But, like, you know, Elliot Giles was a DNS. So this is definitely winnable for USA to go 1-2. Um, men's 3K qualifiers. Oh, here, here's – we have, do we have a video? Is this the Quebec kid? Oh, yeah. So this Quebec kid, he did in Nairobi – run 144 outdoors at the Continental Tour, as my producer Travis is showing on the screen. So maybe I shouldn't underestimate him because he's pretty good. But I still think America's goal one, too. Why not? Come on. Let's go, America. Uh, men's 3K qualifiers. Uh, another qualifying round that kind of eliminated the obvious, but there was one athlete who didn't get through, and that was Aragawe who failed to qualify from Ethiopia. Ethiopia's hopes of going 1-2-3 in the men's 3K are gone. Again, they're going to get them in the women's 15. That's where they're going to get the 1-2-3. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was kind of surprised that he didn't make it to the final, just did not look himself, wasn't able to kind of handle the pace. Uh, Borrega, though, and Gurma both get in. They're the, the heavy favorites, in my opinion. Dylan Magger gets in, which is great. Having USA, the lone USA man in the field gets in. Uh, former NCA stars Jordy Beamish, Mark Scott, both look good in their in their prelim. Beamish is looking forward to this final to really test himself because if you think about it, while Beamish has had a good year, he had that Milrose win. He had a he's having wins that are in slow races comparatively. They're not they're still fast, but slow comparatively. And I think this is going to be a really big test for him because. If Beamish is able to show his Milrose poise and having the perfect timing of a kick and like great race strategy, but able to implement that in like a 730 race, then we're talking like low 730s, like 730, 728 race. Then we're talking and he would be able to win. But the question is, we don't know if that's possible. We don't know if Beamish can do his great race tactics at a hot pace. We haven't seen it yet. Men's 3K final will be our chance to see it. So looking forward to that. Um, Ethiopians look good. Scott Beamish there. You get the idea. Uh, some other um, champions were crowned. We'll, we'll end uh, the pod with the women's 3K. Don't worry, I haven't forgot about that one. Uh, but we had a bunch of USA medals. We're racking up the medals. Women's pentathlon, Kendall Williams got third. Uh, Nor... Vitz, how do you say that name? V I D T S. Vitz, Norvitz, Belgium wins it. Kendall Williams finds a way to medal, gets third. This is the trend I'm seeing. We're, USA is really, really good at getting third and fourth. Okay? Hear me out. Women's pentathlon, they go three, four. Williams and Hawkins. All right? What about men's triple jump? Do men's triple jump. Travis, let's bring up men's triple jump on the screen in the morning session. USA goes three and four. Donald Scott gets third. Will Clay gets fourth. Uh, Martinez had an incredible jump over 17 meters, 1764. Um, top four all jumped over 17. But USA again goes three and four. Oh, wait. Was that the only time they went three and four? No, no, no. We'll go to the men's long jump. Men's long jump. Tentaglo wins it in 8.55. The Olympic champion helped me win a bunch of money when I was betting every race, every event. But Marquis Dendy and Jerry and Lawson go three and four. It's just like America's really good at going three and four. It makes you think, are we going to see other three and fours later on in the, in the, in the, the meet? Um, but it seems like a kind of fun little trend going on in the, in the field events. Uh, we did, though, have a non-3-4, but an impressive field event performance on the American side from Chase Ely in the women's shot put. She broke the American indoor record according to the results here. I haven't double-checked it, but I assume A-I-R means American indoor record. Chase Ely gets second. Uh, pretty cool. Again, USA is just racking up the medals. My medal prediction is not looking good because USA is... Definitely overperforming. Because if we count right now, let's count the medals. 
Kendall Williams, one. Donald Scott, two. Briscoe and St. Price, that's four. Oh, you already got the... What? What? This is, this is wrong. Is that right? There's no USA. Okay, so we have seven medals. There it is. Bring up on the screen. They did the math for me. Seven medals. Briscoe got second. Uh, Purior got second. We'll talk about her later. Ely got second, and then four uh, bronzes. So we're doing pretty good on the medal count, but we have no golds. So we need that gold. We're waiting for the gold, but right now, medal count, looking good. We got seven. They sort by gold. So right now, it's a super way. They should sort by total medals, not by total golds. It's a super way to sort the chart. Okay, so you're, would you rather be Portugal and have one gold and one silver? Or would you rather be USA and have three silvers and four bronze? I think you'd rather be USA. I don't know. It depends, I guess. Would you rather have like three gold, like five golds, but like 10 silvers and... Would you rather have five golds or 10 silvers? Actually, I might rather have five golds than 10 silvers. It depends. The ratio changes as you get higher. The, the, the expectation of what is better changes. Anyway, uh, but yeah, USA off to a great start. Seven medals so far in the first day. Two more days of competition coming up. Um, and they're one of those medals, one of those silver medals, was our very own Elno Perrier, who found a way to get second in what was an, an incredible women's 3K. Because this wasn't a, a, a weak second. This was a strong second. Um, Hailu and Tay go 1-3, the Ethiopian duo. Um, basically, uh, Eleanor Pierre and uh, Gabrielle Dubose Stafford basically break up the potential of a 1-2-3 Ethiopian sweep. And make Ethiopia, instead of going 1-2-3, they go 1-3-5. Uh, but yeah, El Pierre putting herself in it. Um, Looked very good. Again, remember, she was upset in the women's 15 at the USA trials and had a like, we knew she was going to eventually make at least one of the teams, but you know, there was an unknown. There's a chance where, you know, you don't make the 15 and then all of a sudden you have a bad 3K and then she's not even at this meet and she never gets to come home with a, a silver medal from Belgrade. So for her to come through here, run 842, uh, mix it up with the top women in the world um, in the press of run, get second. You got to like that. It's, it's hard to medal in a 3K and in the 1500 at the World Indoor Championships because one, obviously, Ethiopia, Kenya, they always try to bring in some top people. Kenya didn't have that great of a field, but Ethiopia brought in their top, their top dogs. So that there's, it's, a, it's a hard pull. You know, if they throw in, uh, I remember in 2018 when uh, Laura Muir going up against, um, crap, I don't know. Forgetting people's names. God, I'm the worst. When you do a podcast solo and you forget someone's name, it it, it is it is worse. Uh, why? This is bothering me. It's like a Netherlands. Safan Hassan. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot Safan Hassan's name. A lot of monkey brain going on in my head. Uh, anyway, Safan Hassan and like El Laura Muir, they were always battling during the World Indoors a few years ago. So for Puria to come out with a silver, it's very impressive. Um, the Bo Stafford, while she got fourth, I think it's impressive that she was able to break up the potential of Ethiopia going one, two, three. So Stafford and Pierre, looks like their U.S.-based training is coming in pretty good. Obviously, Pierre training with the New Balance team. The Bo Stafford training over there at Bowerman in Portland. So you got the both sides of the country, Portland and Boston, the exact opposite of the country, coming together and finishing second and fourth. Pretty cool for them. Uh, I kind of wish Peria was in the was in the Peria was in the um, the fifteen hundred as well, but we won't get to see that potential double from her. Um, you gotta like it though, because ever since obviously when Shelby had her her ban, we as like an American fan base were kind of putting a lot of the all right, Elna Peria, you're the next one up. You gotta kind of represent women's mid distance running in the fifteen to five k range. And really try to put together, you know, go for, you know, we, you're going to be the, the American hope to get a medal at the world stage. And she kind of had that pressure going into the Olympics. And she didn't have that, degrade, that great of a, an Olympics. 
and you think was like uh, the pressure of like, oh, it's me. I'm, I'm the next. Like it was Jenny Simpson and then it was Shelby and now it's me. How, how am I going to be able to handle this, this pressure to be able to, to kind of not just run for myself? Cause obviously I want to do well, but now everyone thinks like you, when you, you know, when a random non-track fan is watching the Olympics on NBC, you know, they're gonna be like, oh, why isn't, why isn't the USA girl doing well? Right. And that can kind of get to you or whatever. But now monkeys off her back. She got freaking second against a bunch of these Ethiopians. Again, Gabrielle Dubel Stafford, who's really good. Jessica Hall was in that race. She's good. She can now come home and go into 2022 outdoor season with a lot of swag. And I think this is going to be great for her to set her up to have a dominant outdoor season and hopefully, you know, put herself in the running for a medal in the 15 or the five with whichever way she decides to go uh, in Eugene. But uh, yeah. I think that's about it. These podcasts aren't going to be as long, obviously, because we're going to do one after every day. Um, are there any questions in the chat? I don't have, I'm not looking at the chat because I don't have the YouTube page up because it distracts me. But Travis, if you're still there, is there any questions in the chat? And I will answer them. Oh, by the way, this is a solo podcast today. It's going to be solo tomorrow as well. We try to get a guest, but he, couldn't do it, but we do have a guest for the Sunday podcast, special guest, and we got him for Sunday because he knows a lot about the specific athletes who are going to be racing in finals on Sunday. So, a little hint. He act, he's a guest who probably could have had a gold medal if he decided to compete in the events on Sunday. All right, got some questions coming in. All right. Uh, Anthony Rock, Gordon, aren't you aware some distance races can be technical? I am aware. Or tactical, maybe, meant to be tactical. I'm aware that tactical, yeah, distance races can be tactical. But I think if Jordy Beamish wants to really elevate, um, just be able to, you know, prove that he can be consistent at the top of the world stage and not just consistent at the Miller Rose stage, he needs to show his... Uh, this race tactics at a fast race. Uh, Gordon, this is why you lost all your money during the Olympics, overhype. I did not lose all my money during the Olympics, okay? I gambled $4,500 and I only lost like $277. So I didn't lose all my money. I had more than $270 in my bank, but that's pretty good. You gamble $4,500 and only lose $277 and have a, a fun Fun two weeks out of it? I think that's okay. Uh, Nick Roberts, Briscoe and St. Price won't run fast outdoor, LOL, LOL. That's all they got. Won't translate to the 100. Yeah, I mean, there is a legit possibility. Uh, Briscoe and St. Price may not run well outdoors. I don't know. Though, so you'd be surprised when you kind of go to the world championships and you get this, get this going and all of a sudden, all of a sudden you're running 10-9. You never know. But I agree with you. I don't think they're going to. I'm not ready to crown Briscoe St. Price. I'm not ready to put either of them on the four by one, if that makes any sense. But maybe. We'll see. Uh, Alex Learn said, Do you think we will win a medal in the 1500? <sighs> no. We're not going to. No. I mean, it'll be Thompson or Prackle. You, there's only two spots because Inga Burton gets one of them. I just. Oliver Hoare, like, an American's not beating Oliver Hoare. An American's not beating Inga Britson. An American is not going to beat, who else is in that field? I don't know, who, people who are scratched. But no, uh, 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 one of the Kenyans guys, no. It's, if, we, if Cole Hawker was in the race, maybe. If Cole Hawker was there, I would. But I'm not ready. Yeah, Josh Thompson, Sam Prackle, great guys. Love them. Uh, love what they did in college. Like what they're doing now, making world teams. Pretty cool for Sam Prackle to represent Team USA. Josh Thompson, at least uh, making Jerry look cool by having at least one Bowerman athlete there in the on the American side. I think they can make finals, but I don't. They're not going to medal. Uh, did you know why the U.S. only sent Dylan Magger to the World Championships? This is from Joshua Anderson. Uh, don't we get two spots? Yes, we do get two spots. But the reason why we only have one 
is because obviously some people scratched, like Cole Hawker and whoever they, they scratched. So the person who was supposed to take the spot was Emmanuel Bohr. But due to W cap rules with uh, travel, um, he's in the army, so he has to follow different guidelines. And I think there was, I don't know, I haven't, I'm kind of talking out of my ass here, but I'm assuming there was a halt on WCAP athletes traveling to Europe for, you know, because of the whole war stuff going on. I'm not sure if it's connected to the Ukraine, Russia thing. I would think it would be. I don't know. But basically, USATF selected him, and because of the paperwork and, like, WCAP coming in late and being like, oh, we can't do it, it was too late to give, like, someone like Connor Mance the next one up because they already had to submit the roster, and it was too late. So that's the main reason why he wasn't there. It sucks. I Come on. And the fact that, like, oh, it's too late. World Athletics should just be like, all right, USA, you get two people. All right, who are they? Oh, you couldn't get it? All right, who's the other guy? Cool. He has a standard? All right, he's in. Like, why do we have to be like, technically, your name wasn't on the piece of paper by this time, so therefore we have to change it. They can't just have a nuanced conversation and be like, hey, our boy, Bull, I mean, uh, Bull, our boy, our boy, our boy, Boar, that's a hard thing to say. Our boy, Boar, say that 10 times fast. Our boy, Boar, can't go because of a technicality with this whole WCAP situation. So can we let Connor Manson, you know, call up Seb Co. be like, yo, just like erase Boar's name and change it to Mance. But no, we can't do that. We have to have these weird rules, which is a big reason why we had that crazy thing in the women's high jump in the Olympic trials. But I digress. Any other questions? I think that's it. Guys, I appreciate you tuning in to this podcast. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Again, Sunday, we're going to have a special guest with someone who I think probably would have won gold. I'll tell that to his face. He'll probably agree with me, maybe. I don't know. I'll probably actually complain to him for not being in the race because, hey, man, you're giving up an opportunity to win gold. And he'll give me like, oh, you know, outdoor season. That's the real goal. There's no indoor Olympics. And I'll be like, uh, yeah. Okay, I'll tell the people the guest. The guest is uh, Josh Kerr. So enjoy Josh Kerr Sunday. He'll be on the pod reacting to the men's 15s and men's 3Ks. Should be good, good stuff. That's it. Like, subscribe. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys tomorrow.